right. So, it's going to be a kind of interesting little idea. Um, I'm uh, going to present uh, one of my little addictions, one of my games. Uh, that the particular game is an addiction, but uh, just so that you get a feel of, I don't know, me playing with one of the things that I like to do and giving some explanation of it. Um, I'm playing Vietnam and wearing an appropriate hat for the period. Hey, I even dressed for this, you know, so <laughs> that's pretty impressive for me. All right, um, this is going to be kind of weird because I'm going to kind of uh, be trying to look at the screen and capture some of what's going on in the game. <laughs> I'm even vaguely decent. All right, let's see how this works. So, wow, that's kind of crappy. Um, the camera doesn't work very well. So anyway, this is uh, what we have is a map of uh, Vietnam running from down here in the Mekong Delta area upwards through the Iron Triangle uh, and then along the coast up northward um, uh, kind of off to the side here we have Cambodia and uh, Cambodia continues a fairly long country upward and then we get to Laos up here and finally way up here North Vietnam Wow. Uh, shift this Alright So Wow It's hard to focus Um, There's a few things to look at uh, as to the pieces um, the mo the color of the pieces, the U.S. pieces are in green. The Arvin or the Republic of uh, South Vietnam have kind of a yellowish mustardish colored piece. Uh, the VC and the NVA both have red pieces, but the VC will show blue on the map because they're all upside down. Um, the U.S. can't tell what the VC is doing because of that. And there's some kind of dummy pieces. But in most games where they're dummy pieces, they end up having um, really no effect on play except to deceive the opponent. Here, the dummy pieces are kind of bonus things to kill because if the VC um, are allowed to keep them on the board, they still have an effect in terms of like, well, the politics of converting, converting the country. Um, one other big thing in factor in the game is the the amount of uh, the amount of U.S. commitment to to the fight. Now there always has to be U.S. commitment. The Arvin can't hand, can't stand on its own. It needs uh, supplies, etc. But uh, the amount of U.S. commitment affects a number of things. One of which is the amount of North Vietnamese uh, commitment. Um, it also improves uh, Arvin's morale, and then. Uh, the other the the problem though with it is is that not only does the NVA start becoming more and more committed the more the U.S. gets involved, but the U.S. public opinion goes down with U.S. involvement, and essentially you have this sliding scale where uh, the U.S. is building more commitment, and it can't exceed what the national morale is. But it's also decreasing the morale with this. So every uh, you know e every little bit of, of of commitment that the U.S. throws in is kind of a, a painful painful thing. All right, uh, let's take a look at what's going on a little bit. Let me see if I can focus in on stuff. All right. So now here in the Delta area in the extreme south. Uh, we have a little bit of VC activity going on, but for the most part, the uh, the Arvin has done a good job here, and it's looking better and better. I'm trying to, I'm 
I'm sort of focused. It's getting better and better at uh, clearing the VC out of this area. Now that's that's very important because the Delta area has a fairly high population, um, and uh, the other problem is the terrain is very rich. So it's very easy for, if the VC is left alone in the Delta area, for them to convert the population. You really need a, a certain level of activity to just keep them at a low, low level of, of conversion. Um, over here, as we get a little bit north, we get into the Iron Triangle region. Now this, historically, was a horrendous mess. Um, at this point in the game, I'm not seeing a lot of VC commitment here. Uh, mainly, there's no reason for them to be there. There hasn't been a lot of fighting. Now, we've just gotten uh, some activity here with the Arvin uh, First Corps, or First Division. I'm trying to see if the yellow just is absolutely invisible. But anyway, a very powerful Arvin division has just gotten a commander who's willing to do stuff. So uh, the area there is really being cleared out at this point, and it may actually start converting over towards uh, a a away from the communist side. In that case, you'll start to see more fighting. Now, one interesting thing we've got over here, one of these red units that we see along these are uh, coming off the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Um, they're actual NVA army units and are fairly powerful forces, but they have no chance against the full might of, uh, of, of, of the free world allies or whatever, which at this point is really just Arvin, um, the U.S., and a contingent of uh, basically a division of, uh, of, of South Koreans. Um, there will be more very soon. We're going to start seeing Anzac coming in and uh, Thailand, uh, New Zealand. <laughs> a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of countries are going to start sending small amounts of forces, uh, which are fairly effective, actually. Um, they don't compare to the U.S. forces, but they're better than Arvin. Um, so now, what we're actually seeing is the ugliest area is down here. Now this is uh, this is the province of Wong Khan. It's a coastal province. Uh, it's not particularly populated, but and and it's kind of wild, which is what's really the powerful advantage for the VC. The VC are very good when they can hide. <laughs> but if they get caught in a fight, it can get very, uh, you know, I mean, they just, they can't stand up against the full firepower at this point. So, this is kind of an area where it's very, very tough to reach them. And my strategy with the U.S. hasn't involved a lot of, uh, a lot of U.S. units, which means things like uh, the 101st Airborne and the, uh, the 1st Armored Cav of the first CAV, which is another air mobile unit, aren't on the board. Um, and I have very little, very little helicopter transportability at all. So those areas are really, really ugly for the U.S. to deal with right now, and Arvin is just completely incapable of it. Um, but the overall attrition that the VCs uh, suffered, and the fact that as time goes on, the VC have to... Uh, They, ha they, they, they have to, they, they really don't, they're not able to recruit from the local population anymore, and that's already sort of happened in this game. Um, they've taken so many casualties, etc. And we're in uh, 1967. Uh, this is about a year before the Tet Offensive actually happened historically. I may not be able to do the Tet Offensive as early as it happened historically because I've been trickling U.S. commitment in very slowly. Um, now, the U.S. is, uh, uh -oh. 
Um, all right. Uh, now, when we get to the God, the mouse does not like what's going on. Okay, when we get down to this area, this is sort of the center. And I mean, what's funny is I, I said things are going pretty well in the south, but you see almost no, uh, almost no VC activity at all in this area, and. The north as well, take a look here. Here we have a little cluster. Um, this is pretty much being handled right now by, uh, by components of the 3rd Marine Division. And then we go up here, and we're seeing you know, nothing at all. Up here in the north in Thu uh, we're seeing a lot of US presence. This is right on the border with North Vietnam. and. Uh, it's an air, well, actually, Quang Tri is, is right on the border, but again, that's also under control. Uh, there's no, no, uh, no North Vietnamese presence at all. Um, even in North Vietnam, <laughs> they've kind of left. Not that the U.S. can invade. I've been uh, doing some limited bombing of North Vietnam, which is very helpful in reducing what the VC are able to actually have on the board. So, that's really been my, my strategy at this point is to, to limit VC involvement as much as I can and try to make this a battle with the NVA uh, because that's something that's much more expensive to maintain on the board in a certain way. Now, I'm making it so expensive for the VC that this choice has to be made, but NVA units can't just disappear into the wilderness in the same way. So if I can force them into that, I can make it much, much more like a conventional war. Um, I think I've been misplaying <laughs> the NVA though, because they, this shouldn't be working quite as well as it is. Um, but it's always been my theory that this would be the best way of handling this particular game. Whether or not it would have worked in reality, it's hard to tell, because I, there's a good chance that what I'm doing would have the same effect on the ground, but would it really not have the effect on, on U.S. morale? Because unlike what historically happened, which was the U.S. pushed hard, really hard, and uh, essentially was winning the war in a way that I'm not here now. I mean, you look down here. Uh, I say I'm winning in the South with the U.S., and I am for the population. That's the big difference. The population in the North, because I ignored it largely earlier in the game, now I just swept in fairly heavily and cleared out most of the problem. But because I ignored it largely, the North was able to be converted, and it's actually not very much in support of, of the South Vietnamese government. The South, however, is still fairly strongly in support of the government, because that's where I put my efforts earlier, but I haven't been able to wipe out the units, and the VC have been putting some fairly heavy strength units down there. Uh, which means every now and then I run into something that's too big for Arvin to handle with what they have committed. Now, that's usually actually not a bad situation, um, because if I've got any reserves available still, I can call them in and handle the battle. One problem I have is, personally, I have real trouble holding back and saying, ah, I need reserves no matter what. So I try to do everything I can. Um, and because with the NVA you don't have to do much, or because with the VC you don't have to do much, you just have to kind of loiter around and, and convert people. I feel more uh, capable of playing them properly, but like I said, the U.S. seems to be doing okay. Uh, especially since I've started becoming a little wiser. More artillery rather than air power, um, and because it's cheaper essentially, and, and you can commit it to a, an operation in the midst of the operation. Air power you have to put early on. Uh, but also more, uh, more wise about withholding a couple of units just to say, you know, if something's going to happen, I'm ready to handle it. And that threat 
is enough to kind of allow me to direct traffic because for the for the VC they can be anywhere and do something good so it seems kind of odd to go walk into what looks like a risk so again maybe I'm not too good at handling them either because I believe in taking the low risk option no matter what um, we're trying to prepare for an offensive on on the communist side though which is a matter of uh, you know, getting enough firepower and, and, and enough troops into place to be able to have a real effect on U.S. morale. Now, that's that's the big thing. Um, an offensive is just going to wipe out the communist armies. <laughs> um, whatever I commit to that offensive is going to be pretty much destroyed. But that said, it has a humongous effect on 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 the on the home front in the U.S. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's part of the mechanic of the game to try to simulate the reality there. Uh, so I don't know if I've given a very good view of this. Mainly, it just seemed like a kind of interesting thing to do. Kind of a, a video blog <laughs> on my gaming. Um, ah, here's something I haven't shown. These are uh, naval assets. Uh, very, very powerful artillery that can hit along the coastline. Uh, but there's only limited amounts of it, so it's not uh, it's not really able it's not able to swing the whole war. But in the operations you committed to, the naval assets are you know a significant amount of uh, firepower. This little part here is just a chart to keep track of various assets, replacement points, air points, stuff like that. These are all the counters I'm not using along the edge of the board. Some of these are informational counters, um, which, you know, you, for example, these uh, these guys here, Ops Complete, they just indicate that I've done something with that unit for the turn, and it's not eligible to do something again. It's an interesting game, which is very flexible in terms of um, the sequence of play. During the main part of the game, um, every... The, the basic uh, fa factor of the game is the operation. So you're allowed to commit whatever units you want, more or less, to an operation, and you pick a target, and then you, you, you conceivably attack it. Although you could, there are other kind of operations that don't involve attacking, per se. Uh, you know, moving around, whatever. Um, but for each of these operations, which are, you know sort of completely distinct things happening, uh, the VC NVA player has the first chance. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. Um, now, if the McNamara line's in place, and that's an exceedingly expensive option, basically lines of uh, barbed wire, etc., either along the North Vietnamese border or along the entire border of, uh, of South Vietnam. Um, if that's in place, that, that can actually affect this. But in general, the way the game works is the, the VC player can choose to do anything anytime he wants as long as there's not an operation going on. Uh, if he doesn't want to do something, and that's usually the case, because like I said, in my, in my case, I look at it and I say, well, I don't have a hell of a lot I want to do. You know, everybody's kind of in a decent place, and when the U.S. is done, maybe I'll do something. Well, then the U.S. player has an option... If, if the VC doesn't do anything, the U.S. has to be given a chance to do something. If they don't want to do something, the VC has one more chance to do something. If nobody did anything, the turn is over, and we go to some record-keeping, etc. Um, but, so uh, the way the basic flow goes is it's completely up to the VC player whether or not anything happens in the game, except the U.S. has an opportunity to do stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny because the U.S. does the vast majority of the operations. Um, usually, the way the flow actually works is the VC says, well, nothing's in serious danger right now, so I'm not doing anything. Sometimes at the beginning of a turn, there'll be a flurry of VC activity, but usually not for me because, again, they can usually get out of whatever the trouble they're in. Uh, 
although I'm proving that to be wrong, and I may start hiding more. But then the U.S. goes and hunts down a bunch of VC that they can get them. Uh, and then maybe there's some reaction going on inside. Most of it's just automatic generated stuff where uh, where the NVA, uh, where a U.S. operation gets too close to some VC units and they say, ah, we better get out of here real quick. Um, and that's actually kind of free. That doesn't take an operation if they move close enough. But if you start positioning artillery near near the uh, near the VC, they might actually take operations to get out of the area. Um, so then the next thing is, the U.S. just swamps all over the board, killing a bunch of VC or chasing them around to no effect. And then the U.S. decides, well, you know, either I've used up all my pieces or I've used up everything I'm willing to uh, safely because all I have left are my reserves that I absolutely need. That's the wise U.S. player. I just pretty much use everything. Um, and then what happens is the VC then goes on this kind of spree of running into all the areas that are safe to go to and valuable. <laughs> uh, and then the turn ends. And um, there's two turns to every season. In between the seasons, there's uh, this kind of serious administrative phase where you end up um, figuring out how the population falls in terms of which side they end up supporting more. That's sort of a gradual process, although it's much, much easier for the VC to convert population than for them to return back to the, to the uh, South Vietnamese side. So that's the problem with the tactic that I used, is that I got the total population is much more communist than it probably should be. I'm not paying a price for that so far. I didn't think I would, but yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of impressed that uh, I thought it would be running closer because there's a there's an automatic vi win condition where the U.S. Um, if they allow too much of the population to fall into the other hand, uh, they just lose the game right there. Um, there's another one where if they lose Saigon, <laughs> you know, which is just one city on the board, right? Probably means I've got too much. It's just uh, one city on the board down here. Get that? Okay. Uh, if the U.S. ends up losing Saigon, the game is over. So that kind of means you have to maintain some strong force in that area. And more, you know, any force can be beaten, right? So you also have to make sure that no huge army... <laughs> 